Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was going to talk about Perkin Mantle tests, septic design, lead field design, and the math behind them. The way you used to do a lot of it is with the old school transit like this. However, today we use a laser transit to figure out grade. This isn't really going to be a how-to video. It's really more the math behind lead field design. So I'm going to have some video clips of the actual build process, but it's not how to do it. It's just a quick overview on grade, figuring out grade using a laser transit, and why it's important in the general overview of how the Perkin Mantle tests work for designing a septic system. To start with, uh, the environmental specialist and somebody from the county come out and they do what's called the Perkin Mantle test. The Perk test is they drill a hole or dig a hole down into the ground, they fill it with water and they see how quickly that water perks through the soil. So that'll give you kind of how quickly the sewage is gonna go into the soil. And then the second piece is a mantle test where they dig a mantle and inspect the dirt. Once they have all that numbers, it goes back to the environmental consultant. Uh, he collects that data and he creates a kind of system you're gonna need. It's all in conjunction with your municipality, the environmental health person at the county or city um, who's overseeing that property. I mean, it's really important that it's done correctly, otherwise all that sewage going into the soil can contaminate your well or somebody else's well. So a lot of regulations on this and all for good reason, just to keep everything clean. So this is gonna be a pressure dose system based on these specs and the spec of the house, how many bedrooms the house is gonna have. You go down and get a permit for the septic system based on what the county says and your environmental consultant says, and then you have a map, and then once you have that permit, then you start building. We're on the site here with the tape and uh, our map of where it's gonna go. Unfortunately, there's a ton of brush in the way to even lay it out. So we have the D4 cat um, just clearing some of the brush, being careful not to push any of the soil out of the way. Amazing what that D4 cat can do. A lot of this was previously cleared by hand. Um, and basically what that cat can do in about five minutes would take me days prior to that. He's a really skilled operator. It's with the excavating company who's also doing some other site work. And then that brush uh, ideally gets exported out of the site. So so this is just kind of clearing the area, keeping the soil as untouched as possible with the brush out of the way. Once all that's done, then yeah, we set up our laser transit in kind of a central location. And the thing about these lines, these leach field lines, is right they have the to be perfectly huh? level. Right so the grade end? from one end to the other has yeah. no slope in it at all. So remember slope is rise over run. So you want zero rise over the run. So the run is designated in the map. I think this first line right here is say 80 feet. So you measure from 80 feet from one side to the other, and then you use the stick with the laser level to make sure the height's the same. So either the line moves up again, the topography or down a little bit, and you keep walking that off. So using the laser level, the transit laser level in that stick, you know the length of your line and the slope is zero. Let's take a look at a topo map here. So that stands for topographical. And these lines right here run with the contour of the, of the land. So you could see um, like where a valley would be or a mountaintop would be. So this right here, this is going up to a mountaintop. This is just a topo I downloaded. So the first thing I want to do on this topo map is figure out how far apart these lines are. This is marked at 600, this is 650, so one, two, three, four, five. So each one would be 10 feet to go from 600 to 650. So each one of these lines is 10 feet apart. The closer they are together, the steeper it's gonna be. The further apart they are, the less steep. So this is a top view looking down, and what it's doing is it's kind of giving you a cross-sectional view like this. So this would be your rise over your run as far as slope goes, and th those topo lines are going across like this. 
So it's kind of a multi-view and a single view look. So all of this said, understanding a topo is a big piece of this leech line. What you're trying to do is when you're putting that leech line in, you're trying to run with the contour of the ground. So you're trying to get that leech line to stay at the exact same elevation and you're using your, tra your laser transit level to do that. Okay, then you have all of your leech lines laid out. You have them marked with flags or the correct length. They all have zero slope to them, zero gray. They're running along the contour. Uh, they match up to the plan designated that the building permit's on. Then you start digging with the backhoe uh, and you really have to keep using that laser transit to make sure the bottom of that trench is staying flat. Trenches are all dug using the transit to make sure they're flat and then crushed rock is put in there and that crushed rock is also checked for height that there's zero grade in there. So the lines are going to go on top of that rock and then the rock, the water, the sewage, the liquids percolate down through that rock and then into the soil. So you, you could probably see how perfectly flat all of this is, but it is all verified with the transit. And you can see the next line going in up top is getting checked with the laser transit right now. Here's a view of the lines all in, going across the topography, back filled with rock. Um, look beautiful. There is trench on the end of it to make sure all of the pipe goes down below grade to feed out through those leech lines. Again, this is a pressure dose system. This is not a how-to video. It is really more just an overview of how a leach field goes in. What I also really want to convey in this video is how important math is to this whole process. Whether you're figuring out grade, reading a laser transit, whether you're reading topo maps, um, figuring out slope, flow rates, whether it's a Perk and Mantle test, all of it goes back to math. Uh, and this channel is all about the applications of math. So once that leach field is all finished, um, then the next step is to put in the tanks, the actual storage tanks that the sewage runs down into you. And that's what we're doing right here, is digging in the tanks. And then those tanks will have a pump in the pump tank, and that'll pump up to that leach field. So just to give you an overall idea of how the system is kind of laid out and the math behind it, I sure hope it was informative, and I'd love to hear your comments below, whether you're getting into the construction trades, whether you do septic installs. Um, let me know how well I did in explaining an overview of the pressure dose system and the math behind it. Colfax Math is a practical math channel. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please hit like and share it with anybody else you might know who wants to get into the trade and wants a better understanding of how systems work.